let's look at 5.4, the normal distribution. So there are some pretty neat things about normal distribution that allow us to solve statistical problems. The first of which is that the total area under this curve is equal to 1, which can also be written as 100%. The second is that the standard deviation of the data, if the standard deviation of the data is high, the more flat our curve will be. If the standard deviation of the data is low, our hill will look really high. Data is distributed the following way in a normal curve. 68% of the data lies between the mean minus 1 standard deviation and the mean plus 1 standard deviation, where 68% of the data lies within 1 standard deviation of the mean. 95% of the data lies between 2 standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% of our data lies within 3 standard deviations of our mean leaving 0.3% outside of that, which is 0.15% on this side and 0.15% on that side. So let's look at example 2 on page 45, page 245 in your textbook. Example 2 says that Jim Ray's Siberian Husky sled dog at his kennel. He knows from the data he's collected over the years that the weights of adult male dogs are normally distributed with a mean of 52.5 pounds and a standard deviation of 2.4 pounds. Jim used this information to sketch a normal curve with the following things. So the question asks, what percentage of the dogs would you expect to have a weight between 47.7 pounds and 54.9 pounds? So our first step in solving this is to sketch the normal curve approximated by the data. So this is my normal curve. I have my mean of 52.5 pounds and my standard deviation was 2.4 pounds. So I know that my mean plus 1 standard deviation will be 52.5 plus 2.4, which equals up to 54.9 pounds. My mean plus 2 standard deviations will be 52.5 plus 2 times 2.4, and our mean plus 3 standard deviations will be 52.5 plus 3 times 2.4. Likewise, our mean minus 1 standard deviation works out to 50.1, and we consider that all of these will follow in the same pattern. Next, we need to shade the area under the curve that we're trying to find. So we are trying to find between 47.7 and 54.9 pounds. So then it's going to look like 47.7 to 54.9. So this is the area that we're trying to find under the curve. Okay, lastly, we have to use the 68, 95, 99.7 rule which basically says that 68% of our data is within standard deviation of the mean, 95% is within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% is within three standard deviations of the mean. And we want to find what percentage of dogs between 44.7 and 54.9 pounds would be. So between here, we have 13.5% plus 34% plus 34%, which equals out 81.5% of dogs being between these two pounds. So then what percent of dogs would you expect to be between 50.1 pounds and 59.7? So we're now we're trying to find between 50.1 between pounds and 59.7 pounds. Now we're trying to find this area under our curve. So that works out to 34% plus 34% plus 13.5% plus 2.35%, which equals 83.85% of dogs between 50.1 pounds and 59.7 pounds. So now let's look at example four in your textbook. Example four says, Shirley wants to buy a new cell phone. She researches the cell phones she is considering and finds the following data on longevity. So how long will cell phone last? In years. Does this data approximate a normal distribution? And if Shirley purchases a cell phone, what is the likelihood that it will last for more than three years? So to solve part A, download the file to see if data has a normal distribution with a TI-83 handout, and then use your TI-83 to see if it does have a normal distribution. To solve part B, use a graphing calculator to find the mean and the standard deviation of the data. So I did, I plugged it in, and I got that my mean was 2.526 years, and my standard deviation was 0.482 years. Then, sketch a normal curve with the mean and the standard deviation. So here's my mean, 
which was 2.526, and my mean plus 1 standard deviation, which works out to 3.008. Now what we're trying to find is that what is the likelihood that it will last for more than 3 years. So this is all I really need, because 3.008 years is really really close to 3 years. So next, I'm going to use the 68959997 rule to see how many cell phones lasted more than 3 years. So I'm going to fill in on my curve. I need between here, greater than 3.008, all the way to the end. So this is what I'm trying to find. So now I can do this in two ways. I can either say, well, oh, this whole thing has an area of 100%, so I'm going to subtract this half of it plus this 34% of it, which works out to 16% of cell phones. Or I can go 13.5% plus 2.35% plus 0.15%, which also works out to 16% of cell phones lasting longer than 3 years.